A pleasant good morning, afternoon, or evening to those that are joining us. In today's virtual office hour session, we will be providing an overview of TechSoup's hardware program. A few housekeeping items before we start. Please use the chat function to type in any questions and comments you may have. We'll collect those and answer them during the Q&A portion of this session. In fact, you can start using the chat feature now by saying hello and right where you're attending this session from. I'm personally dialing in from Tulsa, Oklahoma. For closed captioning, please click on the ellipsis and then turn on live captioning. Please note the session is being recorded. The recording and slides will be available shortly for everyone who registered for this event. A quick overview of our agenda. In today's session, we're excited to be joined by three of our amazing program managers, Jamie Williams, Kelly Sullivan, and Yvonne Hargrove. Each of them will be speaking to the products, the product offers they directly manage. So without further ado, let me pass it over to our first speaker, Jamie Williams, who will be talking about new products and manufacturer discount programs. Thanks, Kevin, and good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you guys may be. Um, so like Kevin says, my name is Jamie, and I'm going to kick things off by giving you a fairly high-level overview of four of the hardware programs that I manage at TechSoup. And we'll be covering um, who is eligible for these offers, as well as what they offer nonprofits in general. Um, before I jump in, it is worth pointing out that we don't anticipate having enough time today to cover all of the different hardware offers available to nonprofits. Uh, so if we don't describe any programs that suit your needs, uh, please do check out the TechSoup website at any time, or you can always reach out to Kevin and his team or us on the hardware team, and we'd be more than happy to help you navigate the offers, better understand how they work, and really make the most of your TechSoup membership. Uh, so we'll jump in with the Dell Technologies for Nonprofits program. Uh, TechSoup has been partnered with Dell for just shy of eight years now, and they have generously made their discount program available to all 501c3 nonprofits and public libraries. Uh, so there are no restrictions based on things like your budget size or your activity codes like there are for some other offers through TechSoup. Um, it's a fairly, fairly straightforward program. Um, what it offers nonprofits is a flat 10% discount on all of Dell's uh, commercial slash business grade equipment. So this is the likes of your um, Optiplex and Latitude desktops, your Precision and Latitude laptops, Power Edge servers, monitors, and also accessories like docking stations and peripherals. Um, now, we do almost always recommend that nonprofits purchase uh, what we call business grade equipment just because they are designed for business use. They are built with better components, they're designed structurally for better durability, and they often come with more comprehensive warranties. So it basically takes out any of the concerns you might get with consumer products where you're always having to get them repaired or replaced, or you're just finding that they don't perform as well as business grade equipment does. But with that said, we understand that not every nonprofit has the budget to purchase these more expensive product lines. Uh, so we did work with Dell over the last few years to begin including a 5% discount on their consumer grade equipment. Uh, that's going to include the likes of your XPS, Alienware and Vostro machines. And I would recommend if you are looking for something that's not quite a business grade machine, uh, the Vostro is a perfect medium where it's, it's very well built, it's capable. Um, but it's also at a lower price point. Um, a more recent addition to the program was a 17% discount on select Logitech equipment. Um, so since the pandemic kicked in and a lot of us find ourselves, as you can see with the team at TechSoup, uh, working from a remote environment, there was increased need for things like webcams and headsets, of course. <laughs> uh, so Dell partnered with Logitech to provide a 17% discount to nonprofits. Um, on their products through TechSoup. Um, in addition to the discounts themselves, um, every organization that joins the program will be assigned a dedicated technology representative from Dell. Uh, these guys are available to you uh, five days of the week and they can help you with anything, including 
um, if you need a physical quote, for example, to submit as part of acquiring funding, or if you simply need to get approval on the procurement, they can help with things like that. Um, they can, of course, help you identify what technology is the best fit for your org's needs. Um, TechSoup does spend a lot of time researching and looking for feedback from the nonprofit sector. And we have found that a large number of nonprofits don't have dedicated IT teams. They simply rely on third parties to help with procurement decisions. Of course, that often comes at a cost. Um, and so if you are one of these orgs and you need a little help figuring out what equipment is best for you, you can always touch base with these Dell advisors. Um, they could be more than happy to help you with that. And of course, if you're curious and you don't want advice that might be a bit more oriented just towards the Dell brand, uh, Kevin and his customer success team are always here to help you with that. And you know they'll give you a more comprehensive overview of what's available from all of the different brands we work with. Um, so in terms of how you get the discounts, it's fairly straightforward. Um, if you navigate to the TechSoup website and the Dell program page, you can um, place an order for access, just as if it was a regular product you were ordering through the website. Once you go through the checkout process and there is no cost at all, there's no admin fee charged. So this is completely open and available for free to all nonprofit members. Um, once we process your request, we will send you an email with instructions on how to access your discount codes through Dell and you then simply use those on the Dell website to place an order. Uh, you can also, of course, touch base with your uh, dedicated advisor at Dell, and they can help you apply discounts without having to go through the website. So two options on how to use them there. Uh, next slide, please, Kevin. Uh, so moving on to the Lenovo for Nonprofits program, this is similar to Dell in that it's open to all 501c3 nonprofits and public libraries with no specific eligibility requirements. Um, they provide discounts as well on all of their leading business um, grade equipment. Uh, that includes your desktops like the Think Center and Idea, Idea Center series, uh, your ThinkPad and yoga laptops as well as a select variety of networking equipment like your Think system, servers, and storage devices. The discounts themselves work a little bit differently. They are not flat across the board. Um, what happens is once you request access to this program through TechSoup, um, you will work, well, you'll basically, we'll give you a link to the Lenovo website where you will create an account using the email address affiliated with your TechSoup account, so the one that you use on your TechSoup account. Uh, but once you create an account using that, you can log on to the Lenovo website. And from that point on, you will be taken to a version of it where all of the products appear there, but they all have nonprofit discounts automatically applied to them. So it's a very simple and user friendly experience where you simply log in, find the products you need and place an order through their website. Similarly to Dell, um, they do also assign a Lenovo representative to your account. So if you would rather speak to somebody over the phone and get all of the similar advice that I explained Dell can offer, you can do that with Lenovo. Um, and they can, of course, what I would recommend for this program, because the discounts do change per product line, or they do differ, I should say, per product line, and because they do change sometimes as often as weekly, um, you might find a product and a price that works for you, but you need to get approval to place it. So if you cannot place an order immediately, um, you can always touch base with your Lenovo representative and they can lock that in for you. They can give you a quote which basically says, hey, if you need three weeks before you can place the order, you can come get that product with that price point in three weeks time. So that simplifies that process for you. Um, one also one additional thing is Lenovo does run what they call doorbuster sales. Um, this is basically when they're sat on an abundance of product and they're no longer selling it through their channels. So they turn to TechSoup members and they say, hey, before we pass this to our typical resellers like Best Buy and Walmart, uh, we will offer it available. I'll make it available to TechSoup members through the private store. Um, at much deeper discounts than you'll get on everything else. Um, we've seen them as high as 70% on select product lines. So if you do see those on the website and it's a good fit for your needs, those are sometimes the best discounts you'll get on new equipment. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, um, all you have to do to get access to this is to find your way through the TechSoup website to the Lenovo page and request access. And we will send you an email that has all of the instructions you need um, to get your account created on the Lenovo private store, as we call it. Uh, next slide, please, Kevin. 
And the third program we have from a major OEM is the HP.com for nonprofits program. Um, this is the newest of the three programs. It's been running for just shy of four years now. And uh, there are two ways that you can make the most of this. Um, it's very similar to the Lenovo's program in that you can request access for absolutely free through the TechSoup website. And what happens is we send your, some of your organization information to HP. They will go in and create an account for you in their systems. And you will get an email at that point just saying, hey, your account has been created. Please just verify the email address. And once done, um, you can then use your account to log into the HP website. And uh, just like Lenovo, it'll divert you to um, a non-profit version of the store exclusively for TechSoup members. And all of the products there are automatically discounted for you. Um, they do offer uh, the deepest discounts on all of their commercial slash business grade equipment as well. So you will get an 8% discount on all of their desktops and workstations, their laptops, monitors and accessories, peripherals and care packs. And if you're wondering, a care pack is essentially um, a more comprehensive support and warranty package that HP puts together. Um, and they're especially useful for nonprofits that don't have the time to have to navigate their way around RMA processes and finding how to figure out the warranty support for a certain vendor. Um, it's like an all in all in one package that makes that a bit more streamlined for you. They also offer 10% uh, discounts on ink, toner and paper and 5% discounts on printers, including the most popular lines like ink jets, blazer jets, scan jets, so on and so forth. Um, this is a very popular program because it's the only discount program available to nonprofits that you can purchase printers through. It is worth mentioning that we do work with HP.com and not HP Enterprises. If you are a very large scale nonprofit that, you know, you're looking to print out 20,000 sheets a minute, something very high intensive, um, you might not find enterprise equipment through HP.com, but anything that works for a nonprofit that's small to medium in size, um, you will find suitable printers there. So getting jets, laser jets, so on and so forth. And we have very recently included a discount on consumer products. So you can also find all of their consumer lines uh, for a 5% discount through the private store. Um, the HP program is a bit of a hybrid one, like I mentioned. So um, you can either go through the private store, which follows the same user flow as the Lenovo store, where you request access for absolutely free through TechSoup and you'll get signed up by HP onto their private store. Or we do have a select variety of computers available on the TechSoup website. You will find much deeper discounts up to 55% off on these. Um, similar to Lenovo's doorbuster sales, what HP does is, and this is similar for all of these major manufacturers, they only sell their brand new products that they've released in the last 12 months through their own channels. At that point, they pass them on to the likes of Best Buy and whatnot to resell for them. Before HP does that, they give exclusive access to TechSoup members on them. So they will give us access to a few hundred typically uh, units um, of select desktops, laptops and workstations. And like I say, you'll get very deep discounts on these for 55 percent off. And you can you can simply purchase those directly through TechSoup with the discounts applied. Um, and yeah, like the other two programs, these are available to all 501c3 nonprofits and public libraries with no specific eligibility restrictions in place. Uh, next slide, please, Kevin. And a slightly different program. Um, we've been partnered with an organization called Mobile Beacon, who are a division of a nonprofit themselves. Um, Mobile Beacon has found itself incredibly popular for nonprofits, especially since the start of the pandemic. Uh, because what they offer is donated um, internet hotspot devices to nonprofits. So by going through TechSoup, you can get a Franklin T10 hotspot, which is a brand new model uh, for just $15. And um, once you get a code through TechSoup, you visit Mobile Beacon's website and you order the service plan. So the data plan or internet plan to go with it. And all they charge is $10 per month for unlimited internet. So you really will not find a price this low through any other means um, in the US. Um, and they are, they're able to do this because there is, um, there is a program allocated by the government back in the 80s that dedicates basically internet bandwidth for just nonprofits and religious orgs. And they, they secure that to make sure that the bigger companies can't come in 
and charge extortionate rates to nonprofits who really depend on internet access. And that's why they're able to offer it for as low as $10 per month. Um, this program is available to all registered nonprofits and public libraries. Uh, what happens is you will request the number of hotspots you want through TechSoup, and you can get up to 11 hotspots per fiscal year, which runs July to June for TechSoup. You request however many you want through TechSoup, you pay the $15 per device admin fee, and we will give you promotion codes that you then use on the Mobile Beacon website, and they will completely waive the cost of the device, which usually costs between $80 to $100 per device. Um, and as I mentioned, you will then pay for the uh, service plan, which is $10 per month, and that provides you with unlimited internet access on these devices, which you can use for anybody that's working remotely. So if you have field workers that don't have Wi-Fi access, they can take one of these devices, which is roughly the size of a credit card, uh, so very portable. They can take these with them, and as long as you are within uh, T-Mobile service coverage, uh, you will pick up a very strong connection and you can connect up to 15 devices. So you could have one worker take these out. Um, and if you have 15 others with them, they can all connect their tablets, their phones, their laptops or whatnot to it to get reliable internet access. Um, of course, these are useful for people at home. Um, I should add that they're not intended for permanent use. So please don't purchase these thinking that you can keep them plugged in and use them as if it's a home Wi-Fi system. Uh, they are meant to be used for just logging in for a few hours at a time. So we don't recommend you leave it plugged in permanently. Um, but if you do have workers or volunteers that live in areas where they don't have very reliable internet access and it does drop out here or there, say they have an important call coming up with donors, um, they can use it as a backup in case they can't get onto Zoom because their Wi-Fi goes down. They can hook up to the hotspot and use it as a backup source of internet essentially. And the last thing to add to this is um, if you work at a public library or have contacts with them, um, we do find that they're extremely popular for libraries, um, especially over the pandemic where libraries um, will come into TechSoup and they will purchase as many as they can to set up internet lending programs. So as you might know, there is a real issue in America where many, many people don't have reliable internet access at home. And in this day and age, without internet access, you really do struggle to keep up with job applications, with students doing their homework, or just staying in touch with the loved ones. Uh, so libraries are setting up these programs where you can go in as a patron and basically rent out a device. So you can rent out internet as if it were a book. Um, and usually that's free of charge, of course, just like it would be to rent a book out. And these are very popular for people, especially those living in areas where they don't have affordable or reliable internet access. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please do drop them in the chat and we'll try to cover them on the QA. And for now, I'll pass you to my colleague, Kelly. Thank you, Jamie. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Sullivan and I am the program manager for refurbished hardware um, at TechSoup. And um, so refurbished hardware was created in 2006 and it was to address growing concerns about waste diversion and access to technology um, more specifically affordable technology for the nonprofits um, the goal of the program was simple it was to facilitate distribution of reliable and warranted computers to the nonprofits at the lowest possible cost um, and the program off, also offered a solution to um, two distinct and pressing issues at the time. The necessity for proper waste diversion of electronics, um, which at that time we really didn't have in, in this country um, and definitely not globally, um, and access to technology for nonprofits and underserved communities. Uh, so over the past 16 years, many of our global partners um, for TechSoup have also developed programs um, and together with the US, we have distributed over 250,000 pieces of refurbished equipment out into the nonprofit sector globally. Um, and the program, um, so the program on an environmental level 
um, really helps reduce hazardous waste and greenhouse gas emissions. It also saves water and energy. Um, and contrary to popular belief, the, the refurbished devices um, extend the life of machines that are already built for long and intensive use. So, um, and they're also installed with um, and run up to date OEM operating systems. So the refurbishers get the assets um, from ITAD companies that go into corporate um, entities and do you know their asset management and they will you know bring those computers back and they test them, they clean them, um, they put the new operating systems on them. And they're not brand new, but they're they're pretty close. And because they're they're so well tested, um, we we have an astoundingly low um, return rate, and um, I believe it's less than five percent, which is better than industry standard for new. Um, you can go to the next slide, Kevin. So with all that being said, um, refurbished hardware is open to all organizations. Um, the products typically ship within five business days. And um, we can, if, if you go into the catalog and you don't see something that you're looking for, we have a special request product that you can click on and um, a form will pop up and you can fill that form out and ask for what you are looking for. Um, and we work with five different refurbi refurbisher partners throughout the country. And typically we can find, um, we can find just about anything that, that our organizations are looking for. Um, and the little hidden gem of the refurbished hardware program is um, the take back program. And what the take back program does for any nonprofit that gets a refurbished computer from TechSoup is it allows the nonprofit at the end of the life of that computer to send the computer back to the refurbisher at no cost to them. The refurbisher um, will issue a shipping label at no charge and you can box up the computer and send it back and the refurbisher will safely erase any data on that computer and they will downstream and just like they'll destroy the, the hard drive and they will responsibly recycle um, anything that needs to be recycled and um, any anything that can go downstream and be used again will be used. Um, all of our partners are R2 certified or E stewards, and um, they only work with responsible recycling. So, um, once again, back to the environmental piece, it's really critical that that they are all um, staying in that ecosystem. And that's about it for refurbished hardware. If you have any questions, again, yes, please drop them in the chat and. I will hand it over to Yvonne to tell you about the Cisco program. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Yvonne Hargrove and I'm the program manager for the Cisco and Cisco Meraki programs through TechSoup. First, I'll, I'll start off by telling you about Cisco's flagship program, which launched with TechSoup in 2002 and that is their donation program. Eligibility is limited for this program. Cisco focuses on organizations that provide basic human needs, such as food, shelter, clothing, job training, um, and it has to be direct services to low-income individuals. Um, recently, Cisco also added a new portfolio to their donation program, which is environmental organizations, so if any of you are attending today, please do check it out. Um, although eligibility is limited for this program, the administrative fees are incredibly generous at 16% of the retail value of the product. 
And each of these products includes a five year license and technical support. And for the organizations that are not eligible for Cisco's donation program. Oh, and I should mention that Cisco provides both Cisco and Cisco Meraki products through their donation program. And so for those nonprofits that aren't eligible for Cisco's donation program, Cisco offers the Cisco Meraki discount program, which is Cisco Meraki for nonprofits. And the products in this catalog are offered at 45% off of retail. And eligibility for this program is really open. Um, religious organizations, if you're attending today, the Cisco Meraki for Nonprofits program is for you. And it also offers renewal licenses. If you have Meraki equipment currently and just need to renew your license, you can do that here through TechSoup at a 45% discount as well. Another program that Cisco offers through TechSoup is their employee product donation program. And this program is only for employees um, to purchase Cisco equipment at a 75% discount and then donate the equipment to their chosen nonprofit. This program is open to schools, both public and private schools with a 501c3 designation. And we do find a lot of Cisco employees participating, particularly in their um, hubs like San Jose and places like that. So um, if you know any Cisco employees, you could ask them um, and they can reach out to us and we can we can help them out. The last program that Cisco offers through TechSoup, you can see it here, it's not hardware, but I did want to make everyone aware that Cisco is also offering WebEx at a 60% discount, and that's for meetings for up to 100 attendees. Um, as you can see, there is a difference between Cisco's discount program offer and their donation program offer. They do require a six month buffer between participating in each of those programs. And if you visit our catalogs and you don't see something that you need, please email us at cisco at techsoup.org and we can process a special request for you. And with that, Kevin, if you could please take us to the next slide. Thank you. And so here you can see the various Cisco and Cisco Meraki hardware offers and one software offer <laughs> um, that are available through TechSoup as a standard in our catalog. Um, all of the products you see here are available in the donation program as well as the discount program. So security cameras, switches, access points, security appliances, and systems manager device licenses. This is just an example of what's available in the catalogs, so I do encourage you to check it out. Um, and again, I did touch on how to access these programs. Please just go to our site, um, browse the catalogs, and Cisco, their donation program does have different eligibility requirements. You can review that on our site, um, but you are eligible for up to $4,800 in admin fees, which is a $30,000 retail value um, per fiscal year through the donation program, if eligible. And as I said, the discount program, the eligibility is very wide, unfortunately only um, not available to public schools, colleges, government agencies, or non-501c3 public libraries, but everybody else, it's available. And as I mentioned, the donation program includes the five year license. And if you have any further questions, please do drop them in the chat and I would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. That's another awesome review of a very cool program we have here. So with that, I'm going to scroll through the chat and see what we have question wise. I don't see anything in here. Uh, you do all attendees have the ability to come on uh, or off of mute and onto your microphone. You're certainly welcome to do that if you just want to drop in and ask a quick question. Um, 
you're certainly welcome to do that uh, at this time. Uh, I actually did have a question that I was thinking about leading with. Um, put this to to um, to Kelly, maybe into Jamie. Um, uh, one of the things I do recall in California was uh, some of the disposal fees that are surrounded by that. Um, I don't know if you're able to speak to any of that. Um, I just vaguely remember I was, uh, I think, exchanging an iPad at an Apple store and being a new California resident, I was just, I'm sorry, what's this fee? Um, is that something that we address? Uh, yeah, I can speak a little to it. Um, so it depends what you're referring to, but in California, the state does charge what they call an e-waste fee. So this is charged on any brand new device that has an LCD screen of certain sizes. Um, it's a fairly nominal device. I believe it ranges from three to twelve dollars. Um, the larger the screen size, the larger the fee. And the state basically collects this on every new computer the very first time it's sold. So if you buy a refurbished machine or a recertified machine, you will not have to pay it because whoever initially bought it for the first time has already paid that. So it's essentially um, an environment tax, so to call it. So mm -hmm. the state then uses that money um, eventually to put towards recycling programs because they know at some point that that screen, which has a lot of toxic chemicals, will end up um, in a landfill or in some kind of recycling channel and they give that money to support those channels, basically. So it essentially pays for its own safe disposal once it comes to the end of its life uh, lifetime. Right. That about sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> I got, nail, Jamie covered nail it well. <laughs> nail me head, right? So. <laughs> and I wanted to uh, also ask you, Yvonne, uh, I you, I you brought up religious organizations, and that's a that's a great point. Um, I personally have uh, spent time volunteering in that, and even actually setting up wireless access points. Um, power over internet um, apparently requires a little bit of electrical skills. I've discovered, but um, as far as that, like, what are like some of the advantages of like kind of putting it into either um, you know into the churches offices themselves? or even if they have after school programs um I've, that's where i've i've consistently seen these set up so students can you know after school can come into uh, and work in a safe environment um i don't know if there's there are some things that you've seen um even beyond religious organizations uh, where people have benefited organizations directly from uh, some of these tools Definitely, I think that job training, you know, um, places where computer centers where the public can come, um, similar to a library, but often, you know, community organizations will set these up for the public to come in to be able to apply for jobs. Um, of course, after school programs, very important as well, definitely. Um, we do see um, Cisco products being requested a lot by organizations who really need to keep their data secure. So mental health care organizations, um, that's very important for them. So, you know, I think it's just, and of course, you know, anybody who's remote <laughs> and working remotely, <laughs> it's probably using some sort of VPN, which is also, you know, a big part of what Cisco provides. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's great insight. Actually, I do have a question that came in, and I'm going to apologize if I don't pronounce uh, your name correctly. From Mare, uh, what is the limit on usage of one of the smart beacons if we were to use it as a Wi-Fi hotspot? When would it stop working? So, uh, Jamie, I'm going to put that one, I think, to you. Yep. Um, good question. Uh, there is no limit. Um, so it is completely unlimited data. Um, it isn't capped at any point. Um, there, there might sometimes be times where if there's a lot of bandwidth being used on the network, um, the data connection will be throttled. But this is exactly the same as this happens on your cell phones each and every day, but it's usually such a nominal change that you will never notice the difference. So I can't guarantee that that won't ever happen. Um, but typically speaking, there is no data cap. You can just use unlimited data each and every month. 
So you will never be cut off of a Zoom call or whatever it is you're working on because you've hit a certain amount. That's awesome. I actually uh, wasn't aware that there wasn't a cap on that. It uh, makes it sound even more appealing than it did before. Yeah, um, for ten dollars a month, it's it's really a steal, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, I did have a question um, that I wanted to put uh, to Kelly. Um, one of the things about ordering um, refurbished hardware is the partners that we work with. Um, are you able to speak to any um, components as far as post request um, to give an understanding, maybe a little bit around the context of shipping, um, uh, things of that nature, um, being that we are coordinating this with with another partner in some instances. Can you clarify what you mean by components? Sure. So if uh, say that I was um, part of a food bank and I was mm -hmm. requesting um, a couple of refurbished desktops, mm -hmm. I place the request um, as far as fulfillment. I think that's actually the word I was probably looking for. Um, could you speak to some of the expectations that a customer might have as part of that process? Sure. So. Um... The um, so our systems will show the customer that it has shipped the like in the immediate. Um, however, the fulfillment email will describe um, what actually is going to occur, um, which is they will um, the the order gets transmitted over to our refurbisher partners and um, they. Um, the, the desktops specifically actually come with a new mouse and keyboard, um, and um, they will ship that box or those boxes um, directly to the organization within five business days. And it's ground shipping, so it typically takes another anywhere between five and ten business days, depending on you know where where it's coming from and where it's going. Um, and then in the box, beside um, the the new peripherals, um, there's some paperwork that comes, and um, the the operating system that we pre-install right now is Windows 10 Pro, and um, that is um, uh, the it's preloaded and ready to go. It's it's like all set. And I think that there's some uh, user agreements that have to be signed, you know, with any Microsoft product, that's pretty standard. Um, and then there's gonna be some additional paperwork that comes in the box that gives information about any kind of troubleshooting you might encounter or need, um, contact information for the refurbisher, and also links to um, our Zendesk um, help desk portal. Um, so if you do encounter any issues, um, that's also on the product pages and our catalog pages as well. So in the event that there are any kind of, you know, issues that, that arise, um, there's, there's quick access and we have, um, we have SLAs in place with, um, service level agreements in place with our partners to um, ensure that they're responding to any inquiries that come from our customers within a, a two business day time frame. Um, and, um, and also one thing that I, I neglected to mention about our products, we have a 14 day no questions asked money back guarantee. So if for any reason you get your computer or your monitor and you're not happy with it, um, you can return it just like that. No questions asked. <laughs> we wow. might ask a couple questions, but <laughs> we're, we'll still return it for you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's awesome. I actually did honestly not know about the keyboard, the mouse, so the peripherals is yep. great. And then I don't have to deal with a home to professional Windows upgrades, so that's music no. to my ears. No, um, it's they're all they're all Windows Pro. Yeah, excellent. So there was another question that came in. Um, does the monthly plan for each smart beacon cover each device, or do you need a separate plan for each device? And Jamie, like he is Mr. Johnny on the spot, 
each device would need its own plan. So it's ten dollars per month per device. So um, hopefully that clarifies it for you, Mayor. Um, one thing I did actually want is Jamie, um, would you be able to talk about um, the headsets.com uh, program um, and possibly uh, CPO, the CPO product? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do also have a program where we partner with headsets.com and they directly manufacture um, a handful of lines of both wired and wireless headsets. Uh, these are specifically designed for work and office use, so they will often come with um, the little the little bases that you can use. Just you can press the button on it to pick up and decline a call. Um, plenty of convenient features like that. Um, all of the products are open box products, so they are normally products that headsets might have shipped out to a customer. It didn't get accepted upon delivery and gets returned to them, or somebody might have purchased it and said, "Hey." we actually wouldn't we don't need this any longer so they will return it within 15 days in absolutely perfect working condition uh, but of course they can't now sell that as a new product because it's left their facility so they sell it as a pre-owned um, at a big non-profit discount um, so yeah if you go to the text website and just search headsets you'll be able to find the options we have available through them and i believe they all carry a full three-year warranty so you have no concerns if anything happens to it you know over the next three years that's awesome. Um, and we have also recently begun working with a new partner to distribute um, Microsoft certified pre-owned devices. So these are um, devices that are um, refurbished or recertified by Microsoft themselves. So very similar to how I explained the headset products work. These are devices that have been returned to Microsoft in perfectly good condition for whatever reason. Uh, Microsoft will accept them in their original manufacturing facilities and they will put them through a thorough process um, to recertify them to basically say, hey, this is in absolutely perfect condition. It's in like new condition, so there won't be any kind of scratches or blemishes on the devices at all. Um, it's essentially a brand new product just that can't be resold as a new product, of course. Um, so we have a number of options of those, uh, including Microsoft Surface laptops, uh, Surface Go tablets, um, Pro tablets. So if you are specifically oriented around Microsoft products at your organization, uh, they're a great offer because they are like new, yet they're at least half the price of what you would pay for the exact same thing off the shelf. No, that's awesome. It's an awesome program. And uh, for those who may be in the Microsoft 365 space, um, device enrollment through pro, uh, programs like Intune uh, are just even smoother to automate when you're using Microsoft devices. Um, you're kind of all operating within an ecosystem, so uh, that's great to know that on top of the software, you also now we now have the hardware in place. There was one um, uh, follow up on the mobile beacon, uh, Jamie. Um, do we have any? Uh, data regarding the extent of the lifespan of the hotspots, the physical devices themselves? Um, it's a good question. We, um, I mean, we don't have data about the lifespan themselves. So just to clarify, when I said that it's to be used as a backup device, you can by all means use it as a primary device. The main point is that you shouldn't leave it plugged in charging 24-7 just like you shouldn't leave a cell phone plugged in 24 seven simply because it will degrade the life of the battery. Uh, you know, this is a very small device, so these batteries can be susceptible to overheating, uh, which in itself causes it to lose power over time, like the maximum amount of power it can store. Um, so there's really, you can use it 24 seven if you like, uh, but we advise that once it is fully charged, you do unplug it and only begin recharging it when it needs it basically. Um, you know, they aren't designed like a common household appliance that's designed to be plugged in 24 seven because, uh, you know, those devices don't usually have batteries. It's just a direct AC line. These do have batteries that you charge in. So, yeah, you just shouldn't leave them plugged in. But you can by all means use it as a primary device as long as you're handling it that way. Uh, that's a great point. I mean, same as you would with a cell phone, your to your, your point, you're not going to typically charge that. I think the recommendation is over 80 percent. Exactly. So the idea is, is that you give that lithium ion battery a little bit of a break whenever you can. So that's that's great. Yep. See if we have anything else that comes in uh, question wise. 
let's give it another minute. Again, you can you're welcome to come off of uh, mute if you want to uh, have your microphone moment. And I think that seems like we've kind of hit it there. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and then just jump in uh, to the next slide here. So resources, an important thing. So as part of this, again, this recording, uh, you'll receive a copy of uh, along with this slide deck. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's very important to us that um, you are heading in the right direction when it comes to anything and all things TechSoup. Uh, so you'll see here that uh, items such as the Microsoft Cloud Getting Started Guide, Digital Transformation, Digital Skills Forum, um, as well as I'm going to, uh, uh, jump in here and also promote our next um, monthly virtual office hour. Um, there will be a correction on that date. It's actually going to be September uh, 22nd, which is in fact a Thursday. Um, we're going to be discussing uh, SharePoint. Uh, so we hope that you'll be able to join us for that. It's going to be a very good discussion. Um, myself um, and another one of our internal IT uh, department members uh, is actually going to be walking you through the features uh, of this application. So along with that, um, you'll also find some additional resources listed here that are specific to what uh, Jamie Kelly and Yvonne were speaking to um, around the hardware program. So you're going to get the best of both worlds um, as far as resources that we're going to be um, that are going to be provided in this deck. One that I would draw attention to, um, especially if you're newer in your journey, uh, is going to be the digital assessment tool. Uh, this it's a little bit of a process uh, to uh, to go through this. Um, not not too terribly long, but if you are looking to get a complete overview of what your needs are as an organization based on what it is that you do programmatically. Uh, this was a lot of hard work that went into that and uh, it's it's awesome. I've had several uh, calls uh, of su technical support calls um, regarding that where we've walked through it. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. And then of course on top of the resources there are the blogs um, that uh, are listed also here as well. Um, you can reach uh, our team. Um, Plugging it in here at uh, right now as we speak at customersuccess.techsoup.org. Uh, Jamie was uh, kind enough also to uh, to supply um, his uh, his contact information um, for any product uh, questions. Again, as Jamie uh, had mentioned earlier, um, you're welcome to come in uh, through our team uh, to have a larger discussion um, about perhaps better identifying what makes the most sense for you. Our goal here is is not to uh, uh, to turn this into a sale process. Our goal here is is, is to be an advocate uh, and to approach this as if we were one of your own uh, colleagues and team members. Uh, so again, you can reach out to us at customer success uh, at techsoup.org. Uh, and so with that, I thank you all for joining. And we look forward uh, to you uh, being with us on the 22nd of September uh, for our next session where we will cover SharePoint. Goodbye, all. Thank you, folks. Thanks for joining. Bye, all.